Welcome to Catholic News World. Welcome to Catholic News World. Please subscribe to our channel. My name is Steph. Here are this week's breaking news headlines. A young Catholic priest who was popular on social media tragically died in an accident. Father Fabricio Rodriguez, age 29, who had been actively evangelizing on social media with half a million followers on Instagram, died in an accident in Brazil. The priest, who was known for his evangelization work, passed away after a motorcycle accident Thursday, September 12th, in São João do Araguaia. The Diocese of Marabá mourned the death of Father Fabricio Rodriguez, saying, It is with deep sorrow that we inform you of the passing of Father Fabricio Rodriguez, which occurred today, September 13th. Known on the internet for his great joy, he leaves an inspiring legacy. Our deepest condolences to the family and the community. May your memory remain as an eternal memory. Rest in peace. He was victim of a motorcycle accident. The priest's vehicle collided with a horse. We are united in prayer and hope that God will welcome him into heaven and grant him eternal rest, wrote the diocesan bishop, Dom Vital Corbellini. His funeral was celebrated with a crowd of people and religious in attendance. The Carmelite nuns in Arlington, Texas, who became well-known due to their dispute with their local bishop, have joined the Society of St. Pius X. The Carmelite convent in Texas has officially become associated with the SSPX after a long and open dispute between the Carmel and the bishop of the Catholic Diocese of Arlington in an announcement issued September 14th the Carmelite Monastery of the Most Holy Trinity in Arlington, Texas, revealed its new association. The Vatican overturned a decree dismissing the Carmelite nun, Teresa Agnes Gerlach, after she confessed to violating the Sixth Commandment with a priest while under medication following a medical issue. The monastery wrote, In our desire to grow in holiness and an ever deeper fidelity to our discalced Carmelite charism and as an appropriate means to better serve our Holy Mother the Church. In August, following the unanimous decision of the chapter of the monastery, and with the agreement of the whole community, we completed the final steps necessary for our monastery to be associated with the Society of St. Pius X, who will henceforth assure our ongoing sacramental life and governance. We are profoundly grateful to the very Reverend Father Superior General and to his delegates here in the USA for their paternal understanding and welcome. Given our formal association with the society, our triennial elections were held here at the monastery in August, presided over by a representative sent by the Superior General. Mother Teresa Agnes was re-elected prioress for a three-year term and confirmed in office with supplied jurisdiction from the society. The NHL star Johnny Gaudreau and his brother Matthew, also a hockey player, and both faithful Catholics died in an accident. At the funeral, both wives revealed that they are expecting babies. Tragedy hit a faithful Catholic family. On August 29th, when brothers Johnny and Matthew Godreau were hit by a drunk driver, they were visiting their boyhood home in Salem County, New Jersey, to celebrate their younger sister Katie's wedding as groomsmen the next day. While riding their bicycles on a rural road around 8 p.m., the two men died. According to New Jersey State Police, an allegedly intoxicated driver, Sean Higgins, drove into them from behind. Johnny was the father of three, a 22-month-old daughter, Noah, a six-month-old son, Johnny, and a baby nine weeks in utero. Johnny was a winger with the Columbus Blue Jackets hockey team. Matthew's first child is due this December. The widows of the Catholic NHL star and his brother gave beautiful eulogies witnessing the faith, love, and new life at the joint funeral. The funeral mass for the brothers was held at St. Mary Magdalene Church in Media, Pennsylvania on September 9, 2024. Both pregnant, Johnny's widow, Meredith, and Matthew's widow, Madeline, who is expecting the couple's first child, gave a brave face during the service. Johnny was a 31-year-old National Hockey League All-Star in the prime of his career. While Matthew, age 29, was a former standout amateur hockey player who had recently started coaching hockey at his alma mater, Gloucester Catholic High School, in the Diocese of Camden, New Jersey. Dozens of current and former NHL players from around the globe attended the packed funeral. 
In less than three years of marriage, we have created a family of five, said Meredith. It doesn't even sound possible, but I look at it as the ultimate blessing. How lucky am I to be the mother of John's three babies, our last one being a blessing and so special despite these difficult circumstances, she said. Despite losing my husband way too soon, I still feel like the luckiest girl in the world to be his wife. Meredith gazed toward Johnny's coffin and spoke in the present tense. I miss you so much and I love you, she said. You are my forever and I cannot wait until we are all together again. Please watch over us. Matthew's wife, Madeline, was grateful to God for their life together as a family and noted the tender closeness shared by the two brothers. Matt will surround his son for the rest of his life, she said. I'm so thankful God gave us a child to run around for life, to carry on his legacy. Tripp will know how much his father loved him. However, their legacy will live on through the lives of everyone they touched, their kids, their wives, their parents, their siblings. God really did draft the best two boys, Madeline said, line mates forever. Ending of the touching tribute, Madeline pleaded with people not to drink and drive. Call a ride, she pleaded. Please do not put another family through this torture. Tom Iacovoni, principal at Gloucester Catholic, where both Gaudreau brothers stood out as talented athletes and kind, generous, and spirited gentlemen, told OSV News, it's incredibly hard to take any positive from this tragic event where our Gloucester Catholic family and the entire world lost two amazing young men. However, as I was sitting in church on Monday at the funeral mass, the homily touched me. The homily was about the incredible love that Matt and John had for one another, and that love came from the incredible family they have, especially their mom, Jane, and dad, Guy. If we all can learn from Matt and John and live our lives with that kind of love for others, this world will be better for it. Since graduating, the brothers continued to support their alma mater through an annual golf fundraiser that has raised thousands of dollars to financially benefit families seeking a Gloucester Catholic education. The entire Gaudreau family are role models, Iacovone said. In this tragedy, they have shown the world what it means to live a life of love and kindness. I know that I will focus more on showing my own kids and my students what it means to love others as Matt and John did. My hope is that others will do the same. In Catholic news today, Pope Francis has given the devotion linked Medjugorje, located in present-day Bosnia and Herzegovina, his approval, with some reservations. Medjugorje is where the Virgin Mary has allegedly appeared on a regular basis to six local children since the 1980s. The site has become a major pilgrimage destination, with approximately over 50 million visitors since the alleged apparitions began. Cardinal Victor Manuel Fernandez, the prefect of the Dicastery of the Doctrine of the Faith, released this decision from the Vatican in the form of a nihil obstat, which is Latin for nothing hinders. In this case, it means the faithful are authorized to give it their adherence in a prudent manner, but they are not obligated to believe it. This follows the new process initiated by the doctrinal office in May, where the Vatican does not declare whether an alleged apparition is of supernatural origin, but will simply point out if there are grave doctrinal flaws. This new document on Medjugorje recognizes that several of the alleged messages from the Virgin Mary are both positive and fruitful. It also cautions the faithful saying, some people believe that certain messages contain contradictions or are connected with the desires or interests of the alleged visionaries or others. It cannot be ruled out that this may have happened in the case of a few messages. The document also highlighted that its approval does not imply a judgment on the moral life of the alleged visionaries. The alleged apparitions at Medjugorje have been ongoing for 43 years, and in 2010, Pope Benedict XVI established a commission to investigate the phenomena, but the official report was never released. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe to Catholic News World's channel. God bless.